Okay. Let us begin. If M is an L structure, show that the theory of M is complete. Any ideas how to prove this? I think we have discussed this in the class. Just a recap of things. What is the meaning of a complete theory? Every sentence is decided, which means either given statement, uh, given sentence theta is a logical consequence of theory of M or it negation is a logical consequence. So, can you show that? That should be very easy. Yeah, because for a given structure, what is theory of M? So, recall theory of M is defined to be all those sentences such that they are true in M. Okay. The vacation period has taken over your brains. Yes. So, uh, try to get out of it. Yeah, we still have to go a long way. Okay. So, what does that mean? Now, let phi be any sentence. Then, what will happen with phi? Either phi will be satisfied by M or phi negation or phi will not be satisfied by M. Right? Then, exactly one of M satisfies phi and M does not satisfy phi hold, holds. Correct? Only one of it can hold. But what is the meaning of M does not satisfy phi? That is the definition of M satisfies negation, negation phi. Yes, so therefore, exactly one of M satisfies phi and M satisfies negation phi holds. Therefore, exactly one of phi or negation phi belongs to theory of M. What does that mean? I mean, theory of M is deductively closed, right? So, I mean, essentially here we have, I mean, uh, maybe I should write it here in red. So, phi belongs to theory of M. When does it belong? If and only if it is a logical consequence, right? So, therefore, exactly one of, of course, both of them cannot be. Because theory of M is satisfiable, it is a theory. Uh, when, when did I say it is if and only if? Huh? No, why is it if and like why does phi belong to theory of M if and only if it is a logical consequence? Because it is deductively closed. You, if you remember the proof of a complete, uh, completeness theorem, yeah, we proved claim 1. What was claim 1? It is a maximal theory and then after claim 2, uh, uh, sorry, that was step 1, that it is a maximal theory and step, uh, step 2 claim 1 was that it is deductively closed. Yeah, so theory of M is deductively closed. So, therefore, exactly one of M uh, has phi as a logical, sorry, theory of M has, a, has phi as a logical consequence or theory of M has negation phi as a logical consequence. Can both of them happen simultaneously? No, because it is satisfiable. Yeah, if you satis, if phi and negation phi are both logical consequences, then their conjunction will be a logical consequence. Correct? Okay. So, that cannot happen. We cannot prove a contradiction by the theory of a structure because then that contradiction is true in the structure. That is impossible. Okay. So, that is all. Yeah, I mean here we are using that 
um, theory of m is deductively closed. Okay, let us proceed. Show that the following are equivalent. Gamma is a theory, yeah, gamma is complete theory and any two structures for any two models of gamma are elementarily equivalent. Yeah, this is the symbol for elementary equivalence. So, let us recall that M is elementarily equivalent, yeah, elementary equivalence. Let me write it if you have forgotten. If what is the definition? Their theories are equal. Theory of M is equal to theory of M dash. So, this is a uh, quite interesting statement. Yeah, gamma is complete if and only if. Now, gamma is complete is entirely dependent upon the uh, symbol. Yeah, uh, the double turnstile symbol. You are starting with an arbitrary sentence and then gamma will make a decision for it. Either phi is a logical consequence or negation phi is a logical consequence. On the other hand, any two structures being elementarily equivalent, any two models of that theory being elementarily equivalent, that is entirely semantic thing. I mean, I understand that even double turnstile is a semantic consequence relation, but this thing is, you are just checking this. Yeah, and we will see some examples of complete theories in this tutorial and you will see what I mean here. So, how do you prove 1 implies 2? Any ideas? If gamma is complete, then what happens? You start with any, so 1 implies 2. Oops. So, suppose gamma is complete, and m and m prime are models of gamma. Okay, if this happens, then what can you conclude? Like m and m prime are models of gamma. So, what can you say about theory of m and gamma? What is the relationship between them? Gamma is a subset of this and but gamma is complete. Okay, gamma is complete. So it makes a decision. So let gamma prime be defined to be all those sentences such that gamma entails theta. So, this is the deductive closure. Yeah? I mean, even though I am using the word deductive closure, I do not really mean a syntactic thing. Yeah, deduction has to do with the single turnstile relation, but we are not talking about that because in predicate logic we decided we would not talk about proof systems at all. Okay. So, what can you say about theory of M and gamma prime? Then if theta belongs to gamma prime, and M is a model of gamma, then what can you say? Then M also satisfies theta, yeah, because, because gamma, theta is a logical consequence of gamma. So, just by definition, so therefore, what can we conclude? That gamma prime is also contained inside theory of M.
yeah i mean all the definitions are here just convince yourself that gamma prime the collection of all logical consequences of gamma that's all those are also true in m true in m is below is a subset of theory of m okay any questions so far fine let's proceed now so gamma prime now is not only complete but it's also deductively closed what did we show here theory of m is complete and deductively closed so complete and deductively closed what does that mean if you add anything which is not in there then it will explode then it becomes everything yeah so it it can also prove contradictions so obviously that cannot happen both of them now since both gamma prime and theory of m are complete and deductively closed okay what can we say gamma prime and theory of m have to be equal okay so gamma prime was the deductive closure of gamma and we have shown for any model m theory of m is equal to gamma prime so in particular so therefore if m and m prime are models of gamma then theory of m is equal to gamma prime equal to theory of m prime so in other words m and m prime are elementarily equivalent okay so this is what we wanted to prove it looks long but the idea is very simple i mean you don't really have to write this you just have to start with this deductive closure and then proceed yeah we are discussing the ideas here okay what about 2 implies 1 the proof is actually hidden in these steps itself if any two structures so whenever you are given a theory yeah you can always take its deductive closure so for example if i am given the theory of groups then the deductive closure of the theory of groups which is just three axioms associativity identity and inverses so only three axioms that is a theory but if i am given a theory then i can always take its deductive closure and those will be all the sentences which are true in all the groups that is the deductive closure now once you know that it is complete i mean how do you know something is complete that it well the deductive closure must contain exactly half of the elements half of the sentences that's all is required and via like trace these steps back you will get it okay i'm i'm not writing it out instead i would like to show you some example of a complete theory so let us go here so if you remember there was a quiz question just a one mark question write down that a particular uh, structure has at least 100 elements yes well the performance of the class was poor on that question but maybe those who got it right can tell me what what should be this answer how can you write down 
that the theory, uh, it like this is the theory of infinite sets. When do you say that a structure is infinite? I mean, this is uh, more like a philosophy question. Yeah. When do you say that a uh, structure has only four elements? That's our second question. Maybe that's easier to answer. Yes. It has only four elements. Yes, there exist four elements and how do you express that there are four elements in a structure? There exist W1, W2, W3, W4 such that Wi and Wj are not equal. Okay? And then you say that there do not exist five elements. So, let us write this down. Yeah? So, there exist w1, w2, w3, w4 such that wi is not equal to wj for any i and j between 1, 2, 3, 4 but distinct. Okay, so, this, this is the sen sentence which says that there are four elements which are distinct. So, what is the interpretation of this? We actually, I mean, we will prefer to call it sigma bigger equal 4. Yeah, sigma is a sentence which says that there are at least 4 elements. And then how do you say that there are exactly 4 elements? It must contain at least 4 elements and it may, may it must not contain more than, more than five. right so sigma 4 we can say that the same thing happens yeah there exists w1 w2 up to w4 such that conjunction of 1 less equal i less than j less equal 4 such that negation wi equal to wj and okay this thing holds and on top of that for all w, w one of this is true. <coughs> right, what am I saying? That every element is equal to one of these w1, w2, w3, w4 interpretations. So, one of them is true. It cannot be two of them simultaneously because of the first condition. So, at least one of them is true. You understand this? There is obviously a, an easier way to write this by saying that sigma bigger equal 4 holds conjunction negation sigma bigger equal 5. Right? But they are logically equivalent. Yeah, so, this is also logically equivalent to sigma bigger equal 4 and uh, negation sigma bigger equal 5. So, there are at least 4 elements, but there are no 5 elements. Okay, so, this is gamma 4. Gamma 4 is the theory which says that there are exactly 4 elements. Now, the question is, is this complete? Is this theory complete? So, what is our language? L sets. What does it consist of? Nothing. Yeah, it is empty language, just equality. Okay. So, suppose, I mean, uh, what do you have to show? I mean, for two different sets containing four elements, can you really say two very different things? any two sets with four elements are in bijection with each other. So, therefore, whatever you can say here via that bijection you can transfer over here. So, actually be 
only containing four elements is sufficient to determine the truth of every single sentence. Okay, I am not giving you a proof of this, but are you convinced that this is true? If, okay, yeah, I mean, uh, think about this. If I say a theory has a four element model, yeah, I mean, a theory in L sets, in the language L sets, empty language, has a four element model then the statement that it has four elements is true is a logical consequence of that theory so it cannot contain five elements it cannot contain three elements it cannot contain infinitely many elements so for every model it must contain exactly four elements and because any two sets with four elements are in bijection with each other, which means they are isomorphic. Yeah, bijections are isomorphisms, structure isomorphisms in L sets because there is no structure to preserve. So, because any two structures are actually isomorphic, they are also elementarily equivalent. And therefore, by whatever we just proved, 2 implies 1, we will get that the theory of uh, sets containing 4 elements is complete. Do you understand what is going on? Yeah? And if you understand this, then perhaps you should try to answer this question. What is the theory which says that there are infinitely many elements? Any ideas? Can you write down a single sentence which says that there are infinitely many elements? Uh -huh. And then we can have another sentence like for the value, uh -huh. the infinite conjunction like, yeah, it is not Can we use infinite conjunctions? No, we cannot use. Yeah, our lo logic is L omega omega, which means we can only use finite conjunctions, finite disjunctions and finite quantification. So, any other attempt at saying that there are infinitely many elements in one sentence? If you can write down finitely many sentences for a theory, then you say it is finitely axiomatizable. Theory of groups is finitely axiomatizable. Theory of rings is finitely axiomatizable. Theory of vector spaces is finitely axiomatizable in an appropriate language. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that, that one is tricky. <laughs> but is the theory of infinite sets finitely axiomatizable? Just share your ideas. Just saying no is not enough. Then give me infinite collection of sentences which show this. What if I add sigma bigger equal n for each n? Then every model of this theory must have at least n elements for every n, which means it must have infinitely many elements. Yeah, that is the answer. So, what is gamma in sets? You add so many sentences. Okay. Now, do you, what do you think? That is this complete?
I will answer this question better in the next week. Okay, but the answer to that is uh, is complete. Okay, uh, thanks to wash what test. Okay, now you you are reading an L, but the pronunciation of this Polish alpha uh, letter is W. Okay, so this is wash what test. Okay, it says this. If a theory gamma has no finite models and for some infinite cardinal kappa there is only one model of gamma up to isomorphism then gamma is complete. Now, uh, gamma in set, does it have a finite model? No. And let us say countable cardinality, aleph naught. For aleph naught cardinality, how many models of gamma in set are there? up to isomorphism means up to bijection only one yeah because all countable sets are in bijection with each other so therefore by this test you conclude that it is complete yeah so this particular statement there is only one model up to of gamma uh, of cardinality sorry of cardinality uh, Kappa. This particular statement is known as Kappa Categoricity. Next week I will prove this. Yeah, but for now you just have to accept. Okay. Any questions? then let us move forward. Are the following pairs of structures elementarily equivalent? The ordered set of natural numbers and ordered set of rational numbers. Are they elementarily equivalent? No, Sri Ram, why? right so does not have a minimum is a sentence which is true in the second structure but not in the first structure yeah so does not have a minimum you can write down this sentence yeah what is the sentence for all w1 there exists a W2 such that R W2 W1. So, this is true, true in but not true in N. What about the second one, natural numbers with addition and rational numbers with addition? No, yes, good. You can write like uh, zero, you can single out zero in n plus, but you can't do it in n plus. Uh, how can you single out zero in n plus? Like creating less than using, like there exists a number such that. By creating less than, but I think you can also single out zero in q plus by saying it is the additive identity. Huh. Yes, that is not working out then. <laughs>
how about this that the number can be divided by 2 I mean it is twice something it is something plus something every rational number can be divided by 2 but not every natural number can be divided by 2 yeah I mean this sentence that for all w1 there exists a w2 such that f of w2 w2 is equal to w1 this particular sentence is true here and false here ok uh, let us go to the third one rationals and real numbers as odd orders they are elementarily equivalent ok but right now you do not have the tools to say so the answer to that is yes yeah because gamma DLO unbounded DLO you know dense linear orders and unbounded it does not have a minimum it does not have a maximum this is complete Okay, so, this is complete and therefore, any two models of them are elementarily equivalent. We just showed that and we will see the answer to this next week. We will use wash what test to conclude this that why this is complete. Okay, the last one, the ring of rationals and the ring of reals no yes tell me why positive numbers ok very good every positive number has a square root which one in particular 2 right 2 has a square root in real numbers 2 does not have a square root in rational numbers but how do we write 2 1 plus 1, one, plus one. so basically there exists a w such that w square is equal to I mean this is f g f of e comma e yeah this is c e e comma e this is true here but false here so that is all you have to do yeah I mean this is a very simple type of question if you want to show two, uh, two structures are not elementarily equivalent you have to find out a property which is true in one structure but not in another and then you have to express it using a formula yeah that part is essential let us proceed ok P C F N C F stands for finite cofinite yeah so finite and cofinite uh, is this a sub algebra of for following structures so sub algebra ok I mean this is perhaps a very complicated way to say but what it is asking you to do is prove that every finite subset is definable ok so in natural numbers with less than I mean all of them are with natural numbers ok so with less than how can you define singleton 0 for example what is the property of 0 with respect to order in natural numbers it is the minimum yes so you can define 0 please tell me the formula loudly Sujal <laughs> there does not exist so, there does not exist any W such that uh, 
RWX. Yeah, so this particular formula will define, will single out 0. Yeah, so this is true only at, if this is my phi of x, then uh, n, sorry, I should say that phi of n is equal to singleton 0. Okay, how about uh, showing that singleton 1 is definable? What is singleton 1? It is the immediate successor of 0 with respect to less than. So, only 0 is smaller than that, but nothing else is smaller than that. And now, because 0 is definable, we can write down that sentence. Yeah? So, for all w, r w x implies that phi of w holds, where phi is the formula above. So, if w is smaller than x, then w is 0. This des describes 1. Then similarly, you can write down what describes 2. You can describe what is 1 million. Yeah, because there are only so many things less than that. It is still a finite formula. And then how do you say that it, uh, uh, let us say, 1 comma 2 comma 4 is definable. You say that the element is either 1, disjunction it is 2 or it is 4. So, every finite set is definable and therefore, every finite subset is definable and just put a negation on top of that, then every cofinite sub subset is also definable. Any questions? Cofinite. Cofinite is complement of finite. So, you just say negation of this formula. If I can define 1, 2, 4 as a definable subset, then I just put a negation, then it says that everything apart from 1 to 4 is definable. Okay. Now, natural numbers with shift operator. Shift operator. So, is 0 definable? Yes. How? Yes. So, negation w such that uh, sorry, s of, I mean, uh, maybe I should use this f, yeah, f of w is equal to x, yeah, this defines 0. Then how, how do you define 1? It is the successor of 0 and that, that way you can define every single element, every single singleton and therefore you can define every finite set and hence cofinite set. Okay, what about addition? Yes. yes? You can write less than using addition. You can write less than using addition. That's that's a good way to go. And also you can express that it is identity. And how do you express one using addition? How do you express addition? Uh, sorry, less than using addition. So, x is less than y if and only if y is equal to w plus x for some w, which is not 0. So, I think you can express all these things in, in this language and therefore, every finite set is definable and therefore, every cofinite set is also definable. So, actually, the more technical term for this is less than is definable in this structure and therefore, whatever you can do here, you can do here. Okay. So, less than is definable by, yeah, I mean this formula. So, x less than y if and only if for x is not equal to y 
and there exists a W such that, I mean, if this is my F, then F of W X is equal to Y. This defines less than and therefore, everything that you can do with less than, you can do here. What about multiplication? Can you define less than using multiplication? No. Okay, but proving that something is not definable is actually quite hard. You can define singleton 1 here because singleton 1 is the identity. Then you can define 0 here. Why? Because 0 kills everything with respect to multiplication. Yeah, so anything multiplied by 0 is 0. That is why you can define 0. So, you can define 0 and 1, but can you define 2? Okay, so not all finite subsets are definable. Yeah, so here I am not giving you a proof, but uh, because proving that something is not definable is actually hard. Okay, let us go to the next problem. Prove or disprove, I think we have done first one in the class, yeah, while proving some logical equivalences. Is it true or false? Tell me. For all W1, there is a W2? False. Uh, give me a structure where left hand side is true, but right hand side is false. The second one says, so if you interpret it as less than, then the first statement says that there is no upper bound. Okay, good. There is no maximum and uh, in a linear order. What about the second one? What does it say? There is a maximum. There is a maximum. So, obviously, that, that cannot be true. Yeah, you uh, take it in natural numbers with less than as the interpretation and this is true, that is not true. But, I mean you should look at model answers and know how to write this, yeah, because it is not a, a test of whether you can find this structure, it is also about whether you can write about it, unravel the definition of semantic uh, turnstile. What about the second one? Is it true or false? So, there is a W which makes the conjunction true. So, therefore, it makes both of them individually true. Okay, how do you prove this? You should start with, so there is also X bar here. So, let M be any structure. and A bar be in M. Suppose M satisfies LHS at A bar and then you continue. Okay, you write down the English meaning of this, then from that you conclude that the English meaning of the right hand side is also true. Right? That is how you should proceed for such types of questions. Uh, let us go here, find the formula in the prenex normal form, which is logically equivalent to this thing. How do you do something like this? We already have some standard logical equivalences. Which bracket will you try to attack first? Prenex normal form means all the quantifiers are in the beginning. So, you should 
beginning means always on the outside. So you should always start from the inside and try to bring every quantifier outside. So what about this? There exists a W2 such that PW2 conjunction are W1, W2. I hope I have written the brackets correctly. Yeah, 1, 2, 3. Yes. I mean, obviously, there is this extra pair of brackets as well. Yes, tell me. How do you take this thing out? Okay. This there exists. For all W1 and then inside what will it become? So this is logically equivalent to for all W1, I should take it out from, so see this is like, this is the green bracket, then there is one thing outside, so I should take it out from this blue one the inner one and no, but that is not sufficient either. I think I have written one extra pair, pair of, no, th this is not the correct one. This is the correct one, right. And then I am supposed to bring it out. So for all W1, for all W2, what should I write inside? Keep it the same, right? P W two conjunction R W one W two. There should be a parenthesis and I think we are done. We are putting this. Okay, so uh, the process here is simple, you just have to use this logically, uh, logical equivalence sequentially, maybe I should do one more. Yeah, uh, the second problem let us uh, is this, for all W R W W implies there exists W R W W. How do you write it in pre next normal form? The first problem is that the scope of different variables is different. So you should change one variable to something else. So let us say we are changing this one. Okay. Then we can take out this uh, there exist. How can you take, uh, take it out? as it is, right? And this for all you will take it out as? Okay, so with one more step in between, you will get that there exists W1, there exists W such that R W1 W2, uh, W1 W1 implies R W W and that is all. I mean, Actually, this is a tautology, yeah, because if the first one fails, then the implication is true and if the first one is true, then the so is the second one, so therefore the implication is true. Okay, so let us stop here, uh, well, le let us do one more question, that is question number 5. So uh, that is i from rational numbers to real numbers in the language of plus dot zero one. This is your language. Can you show that the inclusion map is a structure homomorphism? Do you remember the definition of a structure homomorphism? It must preserve addition, it must preserve multiplication and zero and one. So, which is quite simple here, oh, sorry there is also less than. What do you do with less than? It also must preserve order. Okay. Now the question is does there exist any other homomorphism 
between these two. Inclusion is definitely a homomorphism. This is like ordered ring. Yeah, ordered ring homomorphism. So, 0 goes to 0, 1 goes to 1. Can there exist anything else which preserves order and addition and multiplication? No. Why? If 0 goes to 0 and 1 goes to 1, cube is already like Exactly. If 0 goes to 0, 1 goes to 1, then where will half go? Half plus half is 1. So, therefore, if it is a homomorphism, it must preserve addition. So, therefore, if phi is a homomorphism, uh, maybe if alpha is a homomorphism, alpha from q to r is homomorphism, then alpha of half plus half is equal to alpha of 1 and this is equal to 1 and this is what? alpha of half plus alpha of half which is 2 times alpha of half. Well, therefore, alpha of half is half. So, therefore, this way you can show that all rational numbers are preserved. So, there is no other homomorphism possible. The rest of the questions are easy, you can do them. Dependency theorem, you should try to write it down. Yeah, that is a good exercise to understand semantics. Let us stop here.